Okay, so today is Six Music celebrates 35 years since The Cure released Disintegration. With me now is the author of Curepedia, the A to Z of The Cure. It's basically a Cure Bible. Music journalist Simon Price. Good afternoon, Simon. Good afternoon, Chris. Simon, do you remember hearing The Cure for the very first time? Yeah, I was 12 years old on the school playing field, listening to the Top 40 countdown and heard A Forest and didn't get it. I thought, what's this weird, ominous, shuffling song, you know? Um, and it didn't didn't reach me um, at first. So it, it took a few years, you know? Um, I think it was The Walk uh, on top of the Pops, which really connected with me. I thought, yeah, that's a band for me, if not the band for me. And why have you grown to love them so much, do you think? I just think they're a band that means something. They're a band that stand for something and you can sort of trot out all sorts of stats, like, you know, the biggest alternative rock band in the world and so on. And yeah, they can fill stadia and they can have big selling records and huge grossing tours, but so can lots of bands, you know, um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Killers, I don't know, Kings of Leon, um, Coldplay, all those bands can fill the same sort of venues, but people don't define themselves by being fans of those bands. Whereas if you say you're a fan of The Cure, I think you're saying something about yourself and about the way you see the world. They're a sort of badge of, of difference and of not fitting in. And I think they're really something to, to treasure because of that. How many times have you seen them live? Oh, God, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, more than 20 and less than 30, something like that. But it's, it's been a good spread from, from the 80s up, up until the now. So, um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I feel privileged to have caught them in, uh, in, in different phases. And, and we're all very lucky that they're, they're still out there. They're still with us and uh, still, you know, really giving a lot. You go and see a Cure gig, you'll feel shortchanged if it's under three hours, won't you? you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the best time you've ever seen them live? Oh, goodness me. I think it might have been at the Reading Festival um, uh, in this century. I think there's something kind of magical about seeing The Cure play a festival to people who... You know, everyone knows who The Cure are. You probably know a few a few of the hits, but they're not necessarily a partisan crowd. And just to see that crowd gradually be won over and just be kind of awestruck by the, the magnificence of it all. Do you remember how you were feeling that time at Reading? There's this feeling of empathy and trust between Cure fans and Robert Smith. You look up at him and you look up at the band and you think they are not going to let me down you know you just you just know um it's it's just going to be a, a glorious show and that it's gonna kind of dredge all the emotions from you know deep sadness to euphoric sing-along pop songs towards the end yeah it's, it's just this abs absolute trust that 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 here's a band who who are going to deliver and in all your years simon as a music journalist have you got to know the band no, I haven't. Do you know what? Everywhere I've worked, whether it's Melody Maker or The Independent on Sunday or other places, there's always been someone higher up the pecking order than me <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to actually interviewing Robert Smith, which is, uh, which is why um, the book that I've written is not that book. You know, there, there was an official cure book um, called Ten Imaginary Years in the 80s. They haven't done one since then. So the task I set myself was to trawl through every interview I could find, whether that's a sort of bootleg cassette of some radio thing they did in Australia in 1981, or whether it's Swiss TV from 2002, or, or, or a Dutch magazine from, from the 90s, or, you know, just anything, just to find the perfect quote to unlock what they were feeling at the time. Because I think bands aren't necessarily the most reliable narrators of their own stories people look back and you know memory is clouded by by all sorts of things um all sorts of factors particularly with a touring rock and roll band mean that you can't necessarily remember exactly what happened so i've, I've tried to go back to the source material as much as possible and, and really tell it in their own voices but their voices as younger men and from this book simon which is a beautiful thing and thank you it's a big thing too this it's a heavy thing. <laughs> it's big, all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> telephone directory size. Yeah, exactly. Don't just have telephone directories. <laughs> um, what's your favourite Cure trivia that's included in the book? I liked, and you know, this isn't a sort of very jolly bit of trivia, but I really liked exploring some of the darker corners of subjects which are kind of peripheral to the Cure, like Victorian asylums. The video for the song Charlotte Sometimes was filmed 
in uh, in, in Holloway Sanatorium in Virginia Water, um, so south west of London, and there, there are all these connections between the cure and and asylums. Um, one one of them in their early lineup worked as a as a porter in in one of them, and uh, Robert became uh, kind of obsessed with mental illness and read lots of books about it. That day that they filmed the video, they snuck into the art department of this derelict asylum, and found charcoal etchings and and a sculpture left by some of the patients and and took them away and that fed into their songwriting so i started finding out all these kind of things about the way that people were, were treated the way that mental patients were treated in the victorian era i found really fascinating and i thought i'm including this in the book is it anything to do with a cure well yeah it kind of is you know it all <laughs> feeds in there it all goes in there how long did it take you to write just under three years that's not three years of consistent writing because I had you know, other work to do in that time as well but yeah um, it was a massive research project a ridiculous insane <laughs> research project um, it shouldn't have taken that long but I, I just found myself disappearing down down these research rabbit holes and finding that in some ways the further I ventured out on a tangent away from the core subject of the cure the more interesting things became and yeah, it, it, it got to a point where I'd already fulfilled the um, original word count and I was only halfway through the subject matters <laughs> that I'd, I'd set myself. So I thought, yeah, I'm in trouble here. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> and it is, yeah. I'm just looking to see how many pages. Is it 436 pages? And those are big pages, by the way, aren't they? It's not a little paperback thing. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy that, that it, it got to be that long. Um, and I did expect the publishers to say, no, you know, you've got to do something about this. But they actually came back to me and said, no, this is brilliant. We love it. We're going to, by hook or by crook, we're going to print this. And and they did. And I, I, I love the way they've packaged it, the, you know, the design and, and the artwork and all of that. They've done a lovely job. Nice one, Simon. Are you set now to go head to head with a six music listener in a cure face off? I feel like I've got to get my excuses in first. <laughs> one, one thing I will say, and I've actually said this in the introduction to the book, is that the fans will always know more than I do. You know, um, I would never consider myself a cure expert. Every fact I learned about the cure, I held in my head long enough. That I, you know, as long as I needed to, to get it in the book and then <laughs> sort of let it go. So that's me getting my excuses in first for my uh, impending horrendous defeat. But um, with that said, bring it on. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Let's see how you do. Always good to talk to you, Simon. Thanks for coming Thank on. You, let's Chris. do that quiz after this. And now then, as Six Music celebrates 35 years since The Cure released Disintegration, my guest this afternoon is music writer and author of Curepedia and A to Z of The Cure, Simon Price. And also with me now is Six Music listener and self-proclaimed Cure mega fan, Will in Tunbridge Wells. Good afternoon, Will. How you doing? Will, how long have you been a Cure fan for? I first went to see The Cure in 1992 at the Olympia Grand Hall in London uh, at the age of 13. And uh, ever since then, really, it kind of blew me away, that gig. In what way? Why was it so special? Uh, well, partly because it was my first gig. I was with my best mate, Max, and uh, uh, his mum picked me up afterwards. So it, it, it was an experience for a young kid. But the band were incredible. They were at the peak of their powers uh, in 92. And they played an extended version of A Forest, which just broke all the rules that I knew about. And I was just blown away by it. It was such an intense experience. How many times have you seen them live since then? Uh, I've seen them about 15 times, something like that. And why do you love them so much? But for me, the, the Cure and, and Robert Smith particularly, he's one of the great British romantics. And he's done for alt rock what Keats and Shelley and Baudelaire did for poetry in the 19th century. Um, and I think he's, he's, he's also a great kind of secular humanist figure. You know, he articulates those experiences of love and loss and anxiety and fear that are so foundational to human experience. And he transforms them into something beautiful, perhaps almost sacred. Have you ever met Robert Smith? No, sadly not. When I was a kid, I used to hang out in Crawley, hoping I'd bump into him, but um, it, it never happened. Well, you were in the right place, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Sussex boy like me. How do you think you'd be if you did ever meet him? <laughs> I would want to buy him a pint. And I'd want to sit down and just have a long chat, you know, about all of his 
music and about what drives him and about our favourite bands. That would be amazing. Simon, would you ever want to have a pint with Robert Smith? I'd love to have a pint with Robert Smith. Apart from anything else, he seems like a good pubman. But I feel a bit shifty about it, really, because I've spent, you know, three years and however many thousands of words trying to psychoanalyse this guy and put it out there in the public realm. And it'd be crushing to sort of find out that I've got it horribly wrong. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. I'd love to. Are you ready, Simon, to go head-to-head with Will? I'm ready to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Will, are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Five questions about the cure. When you think you know the answer, Simon, you say Robert. Okay. And Will, you say Smith. Okay. Okay. Question one of five. Which band member created much of the cure's cover art with his company Parched Art? Robert. Simon was in there first. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, well, then Paul Thompson, now known as Paul Thompson. Correct. OK, Simon, one to you. Question two. Which Cure song was inspired by an English children's book of the same Smith. name? Will. Charlotte Sometimes. Correct. It's one apiece. Robert Smith co-wrote and sang on which punk group song All of This in 2003? Robert. Is it Blink-182? It is Blink-182. <sighs> nice one, Simon. <laughs> 2-1 to Simon. So, question four now. When Robert Smith and Simon Gallup first became friends, before he joined The Cure, Simon played bass in which punk band? Smith. Will. Uh, Malice. Is not right. Do I come in now? You can. Um, well, I'm going to say The Mag Spies. That was one of the bands he was in. Lockjaw is the band oh, I was thinking. Oh, you mean them? Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> it's one or the other. Uh. <laughs> um, okay, question five, with it being 2-1 to Simon. So this could clinch it for you, Simon, or it could go to a tiebreaker. Why did people stare at Robert Smith at school? Smith. Well. Because he was wearing a fur coat. Is... Not the answer I was looking for. Simon, oh, do you come on. <laughs> I want to come in there? Yeah, I it's, mean, it's got to be something. So, sorry, I mean, there's so many things about the way he looks that it could have been, so I'm I'm going to abstain from that. No, Really no. close, Will, but I don't think I can give it to you. It's because he wore his pyjamas to school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. How about next goal wins? Yep. Even though it's 2-1 to you, Simon. I'll take that because I think that that answer about the fur coat was probably good enough. You know what I mean? So, okay. I think I think I think really it's it's two all, isn't it? <laughs> He's so lovely, Simon, very, and very <laughs> generous. Um, okay, here goes then. Complete the lyric. Yesterday I got so scared I shivered like a child. Yesterday away from you, it froze me deep inside. Oh, I didn't say, I didn't say Robert. Robert, it froze me deep inside. You have got to have that. Uh, thank you so much. It's a, a win for Simon Price, the author of Curepedia, the A to Z of the Cure. Perhaps not surprisingly, Will, a valiant effort. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, thanks a lot. And thank you, Simon, for the book. It's a great book. Thanks. Thanks, Will. Appreciate it.